The How music's you? over? Sorry. <laughs> good, evening, good morning to you, depending on when and where you're tuning in from. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Um, we are so happy to be here. We are doing our fourth episode of our March app showdown. Which Four? Means, wow. Yeah, which means it's our last episode, actually. So next week, we're just simply going to be voting for the very best app, only one can win. So make sure you put in your vote. <laughs> Microsoft <Bye>. Teams. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, everybody. If you have not met us before, my name is Teresa Castro. And I am Ricardo Resinos. And we are both technology toasters from Hacienda La Puente Unified School District. And we're so happy to be here. We've done, I don't know, Ricardo, so many episodes at this point, but we are um, a little flustered today because today we saved the best for last because these are some of our favorite, favorite apps we wanted to go over. But just as a bit of a warning today, <laughs> these are apps that we usually spend hours and days doing trainings on. So we really struggled today. We were like, oh, today will be easy. We already know how to do these. But it was a huge struggle because, Ricardo, these are apps. How do you summarize these amazing apps in like 15 minutes. These are the heavyweights. These yeah. are the ones, as you mentioned, that we can spend days doing PDs. I was thinking about, I, I mean, I was feeling sorry for you. I was thinking, how is she going to do Canvas in 15 minutes? I mean, you you do okay. modules in an hour, you know, like assignments and so on and so on. So good luck. And the, but the, the same for me, though. Uh, how do I do, how do I, you know, do justice to Microsoft Teams in 15 minutes? But yes, so we are today, we are up here and we have Canvas L LMS going against Microsoft Teams on this side. And I think we're down here where Pear Deck is taking on quizzes today. If you watch last week, uh, we actually had Lexia. <laughs> Lexia destroyed Sora last week. Um, and on this side, I, I have to say this, of Flipgrid did destroy Canvas Studio last week too. So that's where we are right now. It wasn't even close. <laughs> oh, wow, thanks. All right, so those of you who are fans of the apps we're going to be going over today, we apologize ahead of time because there is no way that we can cover all the great things in the amount of time we have. But we're just going to give you a little preview, a little advertisement, just give you a little taste of what it is for those who have not heard of it before so that you could make an informed decision as you make your vote for this week. So let's go ahead and continue. All right, so our purpose, as always, um, to discover new and existing technologies to deliver, assess, and tailor instruction for all students in engaging and effective ways. And it seemed like we had a lot of fun these last few weeks, but these really are apps that um, our teachers have been using. So hopefully you were able to benefit from our little advertisements of these apps. So um, today we're going to be going over Canvas LMS. <laughs> It's impossible. I don't even know, but we're going to do the best we can. Uh, Microsoft Teams and Pear Deck and Quizzes, as Ricardo had mentioned before. And we do not expect you to be experts in these tech tools. We are only touching the tip of the iceberg here. So, and please do not throw out anything that you've been doing. Okay, these are just added to your teacher tool belt. Okay, so the first thing um, we're representing today is Canvas LMS. There's, again, we could do days of trainings just for elements of Canvas. There's no way we're going to do it just this year, but. Um, if you're not familiar with Canvas LMS, it is a learning, learning management system. And um, uh, we know a lot of districts have been adopting this system. It's just so easy to use. It's a great place for teachers to provide their instruction, for students to um, be able to complete assignments, an easy way to grade, and also sync to their um, SIS system. And there's just so much to say, but I'll wait till we get to that part. So 
Next. And Canvas is going against Microsoft Teams. And, uh, you know, I was trying to find the best way to describe Microsoft Teams. I don't want to call it an LMS because I actually think that's more than that. I think it brings the Zoom um, uh, features in here and it brings a lot of different things from different places. So I just think that just allows students, fac faculty, educators and staff just to meet, work together, create content and share resources. And I know I said Office 365, but it goes a little bit further than that and just so i can show you see i can actually bring people together in together mode inside of microsoft team can canvas do that teresa this seems unfair I don't know. no i just i was just saying that you know this is called together mode inside of, inside of microsoft teams i wasn't sure if you could do that with uh, canvas but and by the way I'm, I'm the biggest canvas fan but i just had to say that <laughs> wow okay so we're all throwing punches I know I'm a little bit offended already. We haven't even started. Uh, Pear Deck is amazing. Our teachers have been using it. You can use it um, on um, Google Slides as well as PowerPoint. And it's just, it makes your slides interactive with the students. So it not only makes it engaging and fun for the students, but you're able to see the types of when they're answering live and you can provide live feedback, which is really important. So I think it just makes instruction so much more engaging. And, and you can already use things that already exist. So you're not like, starting something from scratch. So we love that. Yes. And then finally, Pear Deck is going against Quizzes. Um, and how do I explain Quizzes? It's just uh, gamification for our students to engage them, uh, I think. And uh, there's multiple features when you use it uh, to make the classroom fun, interactive and engagement. And I will show you a little bit about reports and some other uh, options inside of Quizzes that you might not be aware of. OK, so we're going to go ahead and start with Canvas LMS. And I think, Teresa, when you're ready to share your screen, you let me know. And I'll go ahead and uh, put that in there. I'll go ahead and share that screen with you. Sorry. No problem. I was using so many different screens earlier. So please hold. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, that's the one I want. So just to give you a background, it, uh, we, again, are from Hacienda La Puente Unified School District. And this is our second full year uh, utilizing Canvas as our official LMS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So here we are. So <laughs> we were trying to think of how's the best way to summarize what um, Canvas does? And I think we're just going to go through our dashboard and just pick some of our favorites. And I know I'm kind of, I'm a little short on time because our intro was so long. <laughs> so <laughs> I All right, so here I am in Canvas right now. And this is actually my homepage. You can show, you can have so many different ways to show your homepage. We have um, a lot of our um, primary teachers love to have their homepage like this. So it's kind of more welcoming for the students. They have buttons they can press. Um, some of our classes like to have it more like this, where the modules are actually in here. If you're not familiar with modules, they're kind of, it's like a unit of assignments that they could do in order, out of order, depending on your choice. But I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, as always. Um, over on over here on the left, the global navigation. Um, if you have Canvas, your global navigation might look different than mine, you know, depending on your district and what you offer. My account is a little bit, I have an admin account. So if you go here, um, the main one here is dashboard, and that's where we were. Uh, actually, you know, right here in my dashboard, I could see my, if I teach different classes in different periods, they could show up here. You can view them like this. You can, there are different views that you can have. You also have the sidebar on the side that has, give you different reminders of things that are due and discussions and things like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to that course, hopefully. And Ricardo's allowed to um, actually correct me at any time. Because today, <laughs> today I know nothing about Canvas. Yes, just no, watching. That's not that's not <laughs> he is a Canvas expert, so um, we are helping each other. Just to remind you that, Mr. Racino. Yes. I was gonna say that we yeah. I was gonna say when you show the different um, home pages that uh, your district or your organization might have the elementary mode turned on that looks completely different and it's amazing. We're hoping that we're gonna have that eventually, but it actually allows you to put all of your uh, a homeroom and all of your your different um, sections. So content areas inside of it, like ELA, uh, science, math, and so on and so on. We can show you that, but that is available too. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm just going to go. I'm not going to click on everything because of time. You have, if you right click, oh, it's not okay. If you click on calendar, it will bring you to your calendar, and you, as a student, as a teacher, you could see your different assignments and things like that. This is great for students for them to be able to see what's due, what's coming up. Um, your inbox as well, where you can message with your um, colleagues, but also message with families as well. Um, I think one of the more common things that we use here is something called commons. And so this is great. Um, it's kind of just a free for all, a place where people can just um, 
provide resources that they've, they've made. And also you could take or borrow or steal resources that other teachers um, and educators have already made. So here's uh, one from our district. But if I turn off the district filter, there are thousands. You can see there's 10,000s of things in here. I could remove this filter for templates as well. And look how many over 200,000 um, items that I could choose on here. I could filter, maybe I teach science and I'm wondering, has someone already made a test on this? So I could type it up here and it will show me what teachers have already made and I could bring it into my course. So again, I don't have to create things I, uh, from scratch all the time. Um, I can come in here and see what teachers have already made. And if I don't like it, I could just delete it. Okay, so that's a big one. All right, um, down here, I know I'm kind of going backwards Ricardo I'm sorry I'm going to go back to the main ones but since I'm in the global navigation I'm just going to stay here so if that's okay with you okay a big one that I didn't want to miss is um, Canvas Studio and um, in Canvas Studio if your district has Canvas and also Canvas Studio it's a great place because you could organize your videos you can bring in videos from YouTube from Vimeo and what it does is it also takes out the ads and stuff because I know a lot of the teachers we want to share videos from YouTube but we're always afraid of what our students would be exposed to so you could bring it in here and not have to worry about that you could create these uh, videos that for example the ones that I've created here you could turn these into actual quizzes so when students watch these videos, it asks them questions along the way. And we don't have time to demonstrate all of that, but it's pretty amazing because as they answer, if you provide the answers, um, if they answer, then it's self-graded as well. So you can see how they're doing as well. Okay, so let me go back to the basics again, where I was earlier. And okay, oh, I think I'm doing pretty good on time, about five minutes. Okay, so here I am. So I'm going to use my course navigation here, and this might look different for every teacher because the great thing about Canvas is you can customize it. You can um, remove items, you can add items, and things like that. Okay, but I'm just going to go to the basics. The most common place that we stay, of course, is here in assignments because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making assignments, and I just want to talk to you about the different types of assignments that you can actually make. Um, we know a lot of teachers make their assignments in modules. They go straight to the units and they create it in there, and some people like to make it here assignments if it will load for us. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. So while it's loading and uh, making me sweat a little bit here, um, I'll talk about, oh, there it is, yay. So I have a lot of assignments. Oh, can I say that this is my course, by, 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 I just want to say that. I couldn't take credit. I was like trying to be cool about it, but thank you, Ricardo, for mentioning it. This mm -hmm. is his course. You can see I don't understand anything on here, but we're going to continue on anyway. Thank you, Ricardo, for letting me use your course. You are so kind. Okay, so if I'm making an assignment here, we're not going to go through the process. We're just going to talk about the different types of assignments. So um, if you're online, you could just do, do direct text entry, website, media recording, where they could record a video, sound. Um, they could, you could upload a PDF and they could actually annotate straight onto the PDF and turn it in. That was a big one for our teachers, um, especially those who had something like Kami and things like that. And they didn't need it anymore because they can do it right here. Um, you, you can ask students to actually upload a file. Maybe it's something that they're working on. But a great thing is we can also, go ahead. I I was, one of the things that we discover is the ability uh, of teachers to give students choice to show mastery and by being able to allow students to maybe do a file upload or a website URL and so on and so on. It's just been really a great tool for our teachers to be able to differentiate, but also to allow for choice. And I like that he, he mentioned that because I'm always in a hurry and I forget things. The teacher can click all of these so the students can choose how to show their mastery, which is a, a thing that we've been, you know, encouraging encouraging our teachers to do because there's so many ways to show what you know, right? So very cool. Thank you, Ricardo. And we also have something really, well, of course, they could not submit anything and you could just give them a grade. Maybe they're giving you an actual something on paper. Um, but we have something really cool called external tools. And I can't go through them, but I'll explain to you what that means. So you could actually use things like Flipgrid and Google and lots of these other apps that you're familiar with, CK12, Discovery, um, so many things that you can embed inside of your assignment so the students don't have to go to so many different places. They can complete it here in Canvas and you could also grade it in Canvas as well. So they don't have to leave and go click around to all these places. So um, just another very, very cool thing that, I mean, we have so many and, and there are like an infinite <laughs> amount of them out there that you can add. So um, that was really quick. Um, what else? Okay. Mm. I was going to talk about mastery paths, but I think I might have run out of time. <laughs> I'm going to go here to discussions as well, because this is an important one. So you can also have discussions, um, posts for your students, 
for your family. So the kids come over here and they can they can respond and they can do things like that. Um, your grades, I'm not gonna click. Oh, wait, actually, no, this is your course, right, Ricardo? So I can click on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. So here I am in grades and you'll see that he doesn't have very many students. Let's see. Oh, he has a really smart student who got four out of 28. Wow. <laughs> Poor Teresa. Okay, so it looks just like this. So there's you, you have grades in here, but you could also sync this with your, um, your SAS, your information system. For us, we use Aries. So I could do all my scoring, my grading, and have it appear here. I use something called SpeedGrader. I put in my scores, put it in here, and then I could sync it and go straight into my um, information system where where I do my report cards and things. So that's a great thing about um, about Canvas as well, that it has the ability to sync so I don't have to put my grades in here and put my grades in here and do that extra extra work, okay? Um, Ricardo, I was gonna go over master guys, but I think, oh, I can't hear you. I'm oh, sorry about that. I was gonna say that, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh -huh. That, um, you know, when we talk about Canvas and, and what you just mentioned, the ability to sync to our SIS is that basically there's many to one. We love the ability because it's open source that all of these other um, apps such as Perde, Google, Flipgrid, they can all come together and we can bring all of our grades, as you were mentioning, and take them all into our SIS, which has made um, the life of our teachers just so much easier. Absolutely. And I think um, there's so many things I want to mention. I wish I had more time, but I think if, if I thought of the teacher's favorite things, I think it's also the ability to not only use all those amazing tools and to sync into our information system, but also to be able to just collaborate with teachers. You can add other teachers in your course. You could share uh, materials across. So if you work along with your grade level, um, you could you could collaborate together and share. All, I just said that like twice. <laughs> but there are so many things. And Ricardo, I know I want to ask you for help, but I know you're trying to, you know. Get ready for the next thing, but whatever. Um, no, I, I think we both. Uh, I think we both agree that regardless of what we did, we weren't gonna do justice to any of these platforms no, today because no we don't have enough time. <laughs> but if you're yeah. a teacher that likes to save time, you like your scores to be able to sync across systems into your report cards. You want to easily be able to provide different types of assignments for your students, um, so that and they could be able to submit them you know, as well in different ways and an easy way to grade, just a great place to have everything all organized in one place. Canvas is just, it's just amazing. There's so many things it can do. And I don't think we've even scratched the surface. There's so many things that we have yet to learn as well. Can, no, I, I believe Ricardo, I don't want to stop because I feel like I'm going to remember something later, but it's okay. Go ahead, take over. Microsoft Teams. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go ahead and go to Microsoft Teams. And um, as uh, Teresa was describing what Canvas LMS can do, I was thinking that a lot of the stuff you can do in Canvas LMS, you can also do in Microsoft Teams. Uh, a lot of people might not be familiar with Microsoft Teams, but just to give an idea, again, it's a place where students, faculty, educators can come together, create content, collaborate, share resources, but also you can take it uh, as, as an LMS where you can actually grade assignments. But I wanted to show you a couple of things. So Microsoft Teams is actually uh, free. And if your school or your district does not have it, you can sign up for free uh, by going to teamsmicrosoft.com. If I wanted to show you that, um, I think I have it open somewhere in here. So you, I, this is it right here. You can actually sign up for free right here, if you notice. And it's actually part of what um, Microsoft calls Office 365 A1 plan, which is an educational uh, plan for institutions that is completely free. Okay, uh, when you look at Teams, and just to give you an idea, I'm, I'm already logged into Teams right here. You do have the ability to use the Teams desktop app, but also you can use the online. Obviously, the desktop app is going to have a lot more features. And if I went back, I'll be you'll be able to see that I can download it if I wanted to download it to be able to use the app actually. But I'm going to stay on the um, online uh, version or the uh, the. Uh, the oh, it was on my, was on my micro years. That was weird. Uh, I'm going to stay on the on the web based version. So I'm already here. So uh, just to give you an idea, similar to what Teresa said, uh, with Canvas over here on the left, you have what we call our navigation bar over here. You'll notice that it's over here and I'll go through all of them in a second, but I want to start with the main one, which is Teams right here. OK, so again, how would I um, define this particular teams simply a collection of people content and tools that come together okay so notice that i have uh, a bunch of teams in here 
that I've been using. Um, our district, uh, our teams is tied up to our SIS, so actually they're, they're created automatically. But if I wanted to create a team, I will come over here to join or create a team. So I can come in here and I can create a team or I can join a team with a code, okay? I'm not going to do that because I, re I already have one. So let me go in here and let me go inside of one of them just so you can see what it looks like, okay? Let me go inside of this one right here. So I'm now inside of my teams in here and notice that um, it kind of does look similar to Canvas a little bit, okay? So in here, what I want you to see is that I have on the bottom, I have channels, okay? And this is just a way for me to organize uh, content and conversations. So maybe I wanted to have a channel just to give you, so I have a general channel right here notice and I can kind of manage the channel and so on and so on I can add another channel if I wanted to do that so let me add another channel and maybe I can add a channel and I can call it uh, I don't know let's see um let's call it uh collaboration I don't know let's call it that okay and I can give it a description and I can just add it and notice how it's going to add it in here Okay, and it's right down here. Okay, and I have my general. Maybe that's where I'm going to keep all of my files or I'm going to keep all of my conversations uh, together for my class in general. So I'm in general. And notice that over here, I have something that says new conversations. So I can communicate with any of my students, uh, teachers that are in this class, anyone that is part of this, basically, on this team. And I can come in here. And what I love is I can come in here and say new conversation. And let's say that Teresa, and I think she is a student in this class, I can just come and say hi, uh, Teresa, and it will find her. And I can ask her, right, uh, did you do your homework? right? And she will get that automatically in there, okay? So I can do that. I love, one of the big things that I love about Teams is the ability, as we think about social and emotional learning and uh, some of the tools that uh, are available out there, I think Teams has some, one, some of the best ones. Just to give you an idea, going to my new conversation, I have something that is called um, Reflect in here, and let me find it. And I'm just going to kind of click on it. And let's say that I wanted to start my class and I wanted to do a check-in with my students. I actually could do that uh, very easily just by opening. And I can do the, how are you feeling for personal and social, but I have other options right here. But let me, let me just do the, how are you feeling in here? And I can um, switch the privacy to whatever I want to, uh, the duration of my um, my question that I have, and then just ask the question. I don't know if there is gonna be able to show the student point of view. I wish we could, because you will get introduced to some amazing guys called the feeling monsters which allows our kids I log on while you do that yeah, which allows our students to start building their social and emotional learning vocabulary, and they actually are able to interact with you through it. So we'll let Teresa kind of um, come in, and she, you can see what it will look like as she goes in there from a student point of view. In addition, another tool that I can use, and I love to use all, all the time, it's the uh, uh, the breakthrough, which allows us to kind of take a break. Think about when we're thinking about uh, um, um, cell, right? And we have those opening activities, right? But we have those brain breaks too. We can use that too. So it allows you to do that through here too and it basically allows you to bring a lot of different apps um i think teresa called them external tools in canvas uh for me it would just be um apps so just let me just show you what that would look like okay so maybe i want to bring um a wiper to collaborate with um my students and myself so notice that flip creators right here i have a lot of different options right here but let me just bring whiteboard just so you can see it okay notice that it's creating a whiteboard for me right now and I can um, just change the name if I want to. So I'm just gonna, um, I don't know, uh, reading progress class. So now I can come up and create a whiteboard. It's creating a tab for me with my whiteboard. And now I have the ability to use this Microsoft whiteboard in many different ways. If I wanna just present whiteboard where I'm the only one that writes and teaches to my students, I could. But if I wanna collaborate with my students, think about those 35 students collaborating on the same whiteboard with me. And now we're all in the same place and we have the ability to use all of these amazing tools inside of the whiteboard. So just to give you an idea that that's how that will work. I also, if I wanted to bring, just to show you Flipgrid, I could come in here, I can say, let's bring it in, okay? And let's add it, okay? And it's gonna ask me if I have an account, and obviously I do have an account. And then look how easy it is for me to bring a Flipgrid inside of Teams. So I have a lot of different um, groups inside of my Flipgrid. I wanna bring the accessibility one. So let me just click it, okay? I'm just gonna copy it. Just want you to see it. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna put the uh, join code in here, and I'm gonna save. And now that particular topic or group 
it's inside. You're gonna see that it's going to appear right here in a second. And notice that it's inside of my Teams right now. So just a great tool to have. Um, you also have the ability to do assignments. I know I'm gonna run out of times. And I have to tell you, assignments, I'm going to go in here. You have the traditional type of assignments, but I need to show you something. So I can create assignments, I can create quizzes, I can create from something I already created. But Teams has something that I don't think anyone else has at the moment. And I know Teresa will agree with me. They have something that is called reading progress okay and you might ask what it is it's a free tool building microsoft teams that is designed to support tr and track reading fluency for our students okay it, it makes your life a lot easier and i'm gonna actually allow teresa to tell us how she will use it as an elementary teacher just because i'm a high school teacher but how would you use it teresa Oh, wow, you now I really have to help you, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I will admit, um, reading progress is amazing. And the first time I saw it, I, I'm sure Ricardo was talking about it from the high school lens, but I wasn't listening to anything he was saying because I was just looking at it from the elementary perspective. Reading progress is amazing because I remember sitting there with my students doing one-on-one -on -one testing for their accuracy and their fluency and comprehension and, and, you know, just sitting there with my paper, checking off which words they're missing. And, you know, this does it for you immediately. You could have your whole class put on their headphones and do it all at the same time. And you get this data back and now you know what to work with. And I could do it in a matter of five minutes and be done rather than take a whole entire day to listen to every single one of my kids one by one. So um, that's how I would use it. I would just yeah. use it for fluency practice. Like, every week, you know, every day, if I could, you know, and they could see their progress and they can see themselves improve as time passes. Anyway, so many things. Just, just to add, as a world language teacher, as a Spanish teacher, I can use it also for my teachers to improve fluency in the language that we're learning. Uh, what I love is the ability to import anything from Word or PDF, but it also has a great sample library that gives it to you by grade level. Uh, I'm just going to pick fifth grade. It, I have many uh, samples that I can pick. It tells you uh, what they are, fiction and fiction. You know, it gives you the Lexile level, word count. I can select them and now I can create an assignment for my students. Um, something that I might, I'm not going to create it right now, uh, but something that um, I might not mention if I go back to my teams in here, I think I was in the reading progress one, is the ability of using immersive reader inside of teams notice how any of our students any of our teachers can use that not only that but i also have the ability to translate inside of teams think about accessibility for our students as they come in here and they have the ability to use immersive reader i'm not going to go into immersive reader uh, today uh, because i have no time to do it but um okay, were you saying something Teresa? i'm sorry go ahead Okay, so I didn't mention this because, of course, it slipped my mind, but as Ricardo was talking about Immersive Reader, it's also in Canvas, by the way. You can also use it in Canvas as it, well. It sure is. Do we have Translate in Canvas? Well, I mean, when you use Immersive Reader. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Yeah, good point. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not going to spend my whole time on Teams. I know I'm going to run out of time. But just to give you an idea, uh, and anyone sends you a message, you will find that under activities. So if someone assigns something to you, you're going to see it under activity to go back in there. Um, the chat, I kind of mentioned that you can have it inside of the team. So you can also have a one outside. I went over Teams. Any assignments that you have assigned to our students, let's say that I had to grade this right here. I can come in here and I can go into Speed Grader and go ahead and grade it if I wanted to. Something very similar to what Teams has is my Speed Grader um, right here. Mm -hmm. um, my calendar in here amazing okay i can actually create a meeting if i was basically back to online i can create a meet now team or a new meeting when we can basically come in here and meet together as a class if i wanted to do that okay i've actually seen um teachers using this actually inside of the classroom right now when they do their one-on-ones with their students just using it this way uh again the calls you have the ability to do again call people if you wanted to or create a teams meeting if you want to all of my files can be uploaded up here if i wanted to through one drive and google drive because we are nice to google too uh and all of your apps that i was talking about again i did not do justice to microsoft teams you can i can spend days oh and days yeah. and days talking about <laughs> it but uh, it gives you an idea of what it is and how you can use it in your classroom Ricardo, did you want me to show you did, oh yes can we show that just um yes uh, really quick just because again it's, it's such a great tool so here it goes i get some points for helping you right okay. <laughs> i helped you too <laughs> oh, that's, you're right you're right Okay, so um, here I am, you know, from the student point of view, I think Ricardo assigned a few things to me. I have a flip grid here. I have a whiteboard activity, uh, reading progress. Um, I think, you did you want me to show them the feelings one? Is that the feelings one, yes, please. Okay. 
So this is a great one, especially, you know, Stella is so important to us right now. So how are you feeling today? Maybe I'm just feeling meh today. And honestly, Ricardo and I have been moving furniture all day because the whole office is moving. So this is how I feel right now It's because I'm so tired. So I'm going to click on this and then watch what happens. And my internet's been so strange right now, Ricardo. I'm sorry. Feeling but monsters. So here I have different words. And what it does, it gives our students the vocab they need to express how they feel. And that's so validating, right? And it also helps you spot those kids who might need some extra support from you. So um, I think I am just tired, right? Oh, look at that one. <laughs> that's exactly how I feel right now. So not only are they adorable, but they also get the vocabulary as well to be able to express and you can also um, help them more. So. And yeah, and I didn't have a chance to to mention it and, and, and I'm going to be fair uh, in Canvas is called analytics uh, in uh, Teams is called insights. But the ability that you take all of this data from what the students said, how they were feeling and it takes it through the whole year and it gives you a very, very good idea of what students are going through, what they're feeling. But not only that, let's talk about reading progress, the ability to go back and see how they're improving. I'm not even going to go into reading coach today because I don't think it would be fair for me to talk about reading coach today. Uh, so we'll just leave it with that reading progress for today. <laughs> okay, you're right. Reading coach is so amazing. And every time we say these amazing things, I want to go more into it, but that's not the point of today. But I'll admit, you know, I think um, we're blessed in our district because we have the ability to use Canvas and to use Microsoft as well. And so depending on the needs of my class, depending on the needs of my um, students, colleagues, um, I could use all tools. And so I'm just going to say you can vote for whichever one you want, regardless of who presented it. But for me, it's a tie because I, I would use them side by side for different things. So, and, and, and just to add, uh, we, we because we know how amazing they are, we've actually yeah. um, had work with our IT department to integrate Microsoft Teams inside of Canvas. So if you <laughs> are using Canvas, we have to tell you that you have the ability to use all of these amazing tools, Reflect, uh, Insights, Reading Coach, Reading Progress, Immersive Reader, I mean, everything uh, inside while uh while in canvas going to teams we are all winners here mm -hmm. <laughs> ricardo's not really agreeing with me but well he'll have to for this moment but yes yeah, so we have trainings full trainings on this information so if you want to learn more about you know microsoft teams and um canvas anything we have tons of trainings and if you don't see what you like please let us know we would gladly gladly help you that is what we love <laughs> microsoft teams <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that right now. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Ricardo, is that fine with you? Uh, yes, did I? Yeah, uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> no, you did not do it justice. But yes, it already sounds amazing. I will give you credit for that. Okay. All right. So next thing we're going to talk about is um, Pear Deck. And so I, we know a lot of you have been using Pear Deck um, outside of Canvas. People have been using Pear Deck just on its own all over the world. So uh, we love Pear Deck so much. Um, because it just really, you know, you take your slides that already exist and you make them come to life for the students. And as you're presenting, the students can interact with the slides or they could do it at their own pace. Um, but let me just go ahead and um, go through this. So it allows teachers to make any presentation interactive, just like what I said. Um, every student has an answer. So, you know, those students who are shy to raise their hands and things like that, we are getting everyone to participate this way. So I love that. Um, as a teacher, you could see the individual answers as well. So you could see who's struggling, who who's off task, who needs a little bit more support. And you could see, and not only can you see, you could you could start them, you can also give feedback and they'll see your feedback as well. Okay, we saw our teachers thrive using this in distance learning, but also, you know, when they came back to the classroom, teachers were still using this. So benefits of active learning right here. I'm not going to go through all of that because this is part of our training that we provided when we were doing Pear Deck. Sorry, Ricardo, I kind of cheated a little bit. Um, but here are the types of things that you can do in the free version, because we know some of you um, in our district, we have the full version, but some of us have the free version and don't feel like you can't do much. Ooh, Claudia, thank you. Your favorite. Oh, that means I win. <laughs> I, I think she was talking about Microsoft Teams, but um, I'm just playing. No, she's talking about Pear Deck. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my FPL? I'm going to put something else. Okay. Um, so these are the types of questions you can have for free already. And our teachers, before we had the full version, were already flying with credit because it was amazing. You could write, the students can write text in their response. They could write a number, choose an answer, show a student a website, 
um, what, what teachers would show a student a website embedded inside the slides, non-interactive slides, so just slides that they could just see information, they don't interact with it. So I'm just going to show you some samples of that right now. So um, here, I'm actually going to put this side by side if it works. Okay, over here on my right, I'm sorry if it looks funny, I'm a student on the right and I'm a teacher on the left. So let me go to 12. So here I am. And so she did I clarify, just have to say that she clarified and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but Pear Deck is not going against Microsoft Teams, so I still have a chance. Quizzes, <laughs> stay tuned. Oh my gosh, you're making me laugh so much. Okay, I love you, Claudia. You already know that. Okay. <laughs> so how would a former student describe you one word? So this is a teacher training, so I'm just going to put something here. I just pretend I'm the student. I'm seeing this information. I'm answering right now, and um, I don't know. I'm going to put that as a student. You can see it on the right. So I'm putting that, and from the teacher's point of view, you can see the student response come in, and as a teacher, if you want to, you can give feedback. I can, I'm in the same person. I tried this earlier. So you are so smart. Send feedback from the teacher's point of view. And then now as a student right here, I can see, oh, I have feedback. And students love to get feedback, right? Sometimes they feel unnoticed, but they see that feedback coming in. It's just amazing. So you can do that at any time if you have that turned on. Um, you could also do numbers as well. Uh, let me go to the numbers. Oops, let me close that. Okay, so I could enter numbers like we said. We could do different numbers. I'm not actually, I'm just going to continue on. And this is a static slide, so you could just see the answers or, you know, you want to demonstrate something and the students actually don't interact. Um, you could do multiple choice as well. I'm not going to go through these from the teacher end. I just want you to see some of the options. Um, you can also you can also embed the Desmos site in here. Actually, any website you could put in here and the students can interact. So I'm not going to go through that, but I just wanted to show you that it's there. Again, multiple choice. And now here's the premium version. So for those of you who are wondering, is it worth the premium version? Let me just show you what we have. You also have drag a dot. So you could drag things um, in your responses. You could drag a line, you could draw something, or you could draw on a picture. So I'm just going to show you quickly. Ricardo, I think I still have time. So here's yeah, a, a dot, time. dot one. So your dot can be different shapes. So here's one that's a, a person. I could say how I'm feeling. I'm kind of feeling like, yay, because Claudia says she loves me. Okay, so I mean, not me, Paradeck. <laughs> Um, but so I'm so excited. So I could do that. And from the teacher's end, of course, you see all your students' responses. So you see how they're feeling. This is a great check-in when students come into your class. How are you feeling today? And some students are shy to tell you really what's going on. But maybe you'll have some students who will, you know, have something like this. And maybe it gives you kind of a, a signal to maybe check on them a little bit later and see what's going on with them. Okay. And they wouldn't tell you if they weren't given this opportunity for some kids, right? Um, you could drop your pin. Again, this is just another way to drag a dot. I'm not reading the prompt right now, Ricardo, so don't judge me, okay? <laughs> you could drag a line like what we said That's earlier. where I would have put it. It is? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read the question. <laughs> and here's an app. This is a static slide to show the answer. So if I was going through this with my students, I would say, oh, is this what, did you get it right? <laughs> um, here's another line over here. I'm not going to go. I already know the answer to this one. It's, um, it's here somewhere. I know it because it's 1998. Right there. And here's a draw one, which we love. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because Ricardo loves to make fun of my uh, drawing abilities, but I'm just going to draw a heart. That's not really, that's not the prompt. I know it's an animal. Okay. <laughs> you could draw a line. You can use highlighter. You could also do text right here. My heart. Okay. So a lot of um, teachers use that for lots of different prompts, not just for fun, like what I'm doing right now. Um, right here, you can actually draw on the slide. So let's say circle, if this one says circle, the nouns in yellow, so I could take my yellow as students, I could choose, um, I could do this, oops, oh, because I have it on text, I'm sorry. Just like that, oh, it's not yellow, <laughs> don't judge me. Okay, anyways, you're getting what I'm saying here. Okay, you can also label, I'm using the same exact feature here, but I would label like what I showed you earlier. And uh, we're not actually going to take you into that, but so many options here. And from the teacher dashboard, like we said, you can see all your students' responses. You can you can star it. You can respond. To, you can give them feedback. And um, you know, it just really shows you. It's kind of a, a you know an informal assessment to see how they're doing. And so you can adjust your instruction as well. And the kids have fun. It's like a game for them. So like they're learning at the same time. So I love that. Anyways, that was in a nutshell. Predic. Did you say a game? Like an engaging game? 
I did. Perfect. So let's go into quizzes. So what I love about quizzes uh, is that it can be in structure pace, but also it could be student uh, pace if you wanted to do that. I think um, uh, Perdic does something yeah. similar to that, um, I believe. Um, our students can use their mobile devices or their computers that they have at school. Uh, it, it works with anything. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can access millions and millions of quizzes that are already created for you. Uh, you have the ability to use the quiz format of it and also the lesson that most, some people might not be familiar with. And uh, you're going to see that it looks very similar to Pear Deck, actually, when I do the lesson form uh, of quizzes. Uh, the reports are amazing. Uh, the ability to have those grades for our students. Uh, you can integrate this into Canvas if you wanted to. And the option to customize things that are already created so you can make them more uh, to fit what you're trying to do. So I'm, he I'm here in quizzes right now, and I'm going to just log in. Um, I'm going, what I'm going to show you today is the free uh, version of the uh, of the uh, of quizzes. There are paid features to it, but I'm going to show you. You can do it with Google or Microsoft, or if you've been using it for as long as I have, you have your own username and password. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but now I'm in here and then automatically it's going to say, what are you teaching today? So you can look for anything. So maybe I was doing the water cycle. Right. And notice that I automatically can find just thousands of games that have already been created for me that I don't have to do. But a lot of people, that's the top uh, quizzes, but a lot of people don't seem to notice that there's also something called lessons in here. And if I have a, uh, some time at the end, I'll go over lessons uh, so you can see what that looks like. But I can filter also by grade if I want to. I can filter by subject and I have more options over here. Okay, so automatically, I didn't have to create anything. I came in here and automatically could find something that I want to use today. If you scroll down, you also have the ability to look by uh, content if you wanted to do that. Also, they have icebreakers and bell ringers, and they go by a uh, different content area if you wanted to look for those. Okay, but you do have the ability to create, if you want to, a new quiz or a new lesson. Again, uh, I'll talk about lessons in a second. It's a basic instructor led experience where size and multimedia are combined together. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you've been using it, uh, you can explore just like a, where I was. If you have a library, uh, notice that I do have a library with different classes for my John Hopkins classes that I do teach. So I have everything organized by my courses. So it just keeps it easier for me to be able to go and say, oh, what I'm doing today, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to be using. OK, uh, if you are um, your organization can be in here, too. A lot of our teachers have the ability or, or they used to have the ability to tie their classes from Google Classroom. We don't use Google Classroom any, anymore, but you have the ability to actually uh, take any quizzes and embed inside of Canvas LMS, which is really easy to do. So you do have the ability um, reports. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to show you reports and um, just to give you an idea, I can come in here and this was something that I was teaching yesterday. Just really quick, I can see the accuracy just by looking at the colors, not as the yellow or maybe the, the, the little red over here. I'll be like, oh, you know, I got to go back and review that with my students, right? Let me just go in here and notice that I can see how they did by uh, as a whole, by each question. Go ahead. Claudia also said she loves quizzes too, just so you know. She loves quizzes too. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we can see the reports are incredible, like I was saying. And you do have some settings in here. Uh, notice that there's a completely brand new integration with Canvas. It is a paid feature. I'm not going to go into it today, but it integrates. It puts it in your speed grader. It, great, it does all this stuff that you, yeah, it's incredible. Okay. Um, can you can you grade on Pear Deck? I'm just, just wondering. Is that something that you can do on Pear Deck? I'm not sure, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to ask. Okay, but well, let's continue. So just to give an idea, I, if I wanted to just use a quiz, a really quick quiz. Okay, let's go back to the water cycle. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but water cycle, and I'm just going to use the top quiz right here. I can come in here. Actually, that's a lesson. Let me just go to a quiz. And then just pick it, and I can do it again. I can do a, a instructor-led live quiz, so I can assign us homework. To me, the, the the fun part about quizzes is to do it with the rest of the students together in class. So I wouldn't do it as an assignment, but some people use it like that. I would just start a live quiz. I can do a classic or instructor pace. I will do the classic, and I can do team, classic, or test. And honestly, what our students love about quizzes, to be honest with you, is the memes that come into play as our students are going through it. So just so you know, this is kind of great to be able. You actually can create your own memes too if you didn't know that okay you have some options in here for music uh redemption questions and so on and so on but i'm not gonna spend time because you're probably familiar with the game but i did want to show you what the lesson looks like so i'm gonna go into a start a live lesson just so you can look at it okay so let me go in here okay and i get notice that i have 21 slides okay so i'm going to present and i'm not gonna go through the whole thing but as i go in here as a teacher now i have the ability um 
um, to actually start, my students will join. And Teresa, would you like to just to join? So yeah, just, we don't have to show your site, but if you can just join, just okay. be nice. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to send me that link or? No? Yeah, I can share the link right here. Let me give it to you. So notice that Canvas thing right there, okay? That I was talking about. Oh, notice that you can send it to Microsoft Teams too if you wanted to. Just just throwing that out there. So let me send you that right now. Thank you. And as you're doing that, just um, oh no, it's okay. It's not fair. I was gonna add something. Never mind. <laughs> I will add we love you too, Claudia. Thank you for being oh, here. Thank you. Thank you. You're wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to wait. So you'll be able to see when your students are joining in here. So I'm just going to wait. And then notice that it's going to say one student has joined in a second once uh, Teresa joins. If you set it up inside of Canvas, so I can see automatically she called herself winner. So she must be talking about quizzes right now. So as we start, we'll go ahead and start. Okay. And notice that I actually have, and, and people are not familiar with this, okay? But notice that I go in here, that there's a new control center. I'm not gonna go through that right now, but uh, notice that over here, I have a live whiteboard when the kids can actually write with me and we all collaborate together. But let me kind of go into here and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go to the first slide and I do my teaching. I do my, if you wanna call it teacher center, right? And I go through my first slide and I talk about it and I mention it and I can write on it if I wanted to use the whiteboard um, that I showed you a second ago to kind of uh, uh, um, give more details to my students, right? And go into in depth. But then after that, you'll notice that I'll go through my through my different uh, slides and then all of a sudden my student gets a question based on what I just covered. So now Teresa on her side is getting a question. If I was a better teacher, I would have explained what I was, <laughs> you know, what I was supposed to cover, but she gets a question and she gets to respond it. And I actually get to see that it's all done. Okay. And I can actually go see how they did and so on and so on. Okay. I can go back and reteach. I can go uh, forward. If I think that everybody has, uh, you know, uh, um, gotten the point, right. I can see how it's going and so on and so on. So just a great tool that I don't think a lot of our teachers continue my lesson and I just continue through it that I don't think we use enough. And it's just things that are already created. And again, they're engaged while I'm presenting my lesson. And that's what is called lesson inside of quiz. It's just a great tool, uh, very similar to Pear Deck in my opinion. Uh, it's just completely what you prefer. Okay. Are you done with that? <laughs> I, was that not enough? <laughs> no, you know, and the thing that I just I knew, I knew was going to happen as you were presenting, I remembered one of the greatest things about Paradox. I'm not trying to win over quizzes with Cardi, I was actually really blown away it's by too that. Too late now. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, can I just show something really quick? Not for any redemption reasons, but just because I missed it. Fine. I Go admit, ahead. I admit. Okay, so um, can you share my screen? Yeah, I am. Just really quick. Sorry, everybody. I know because teachers will be like, why didn't you share that? Just so you know that um, not in competition, but just it's also here. Paradox also has a great amount of templates. So if you have um, your social and emotional learning, you have your templates in here, you could simply add these into your slides, just simply bring them in. Um, there's a lot of things, different subjects and different grades as well. I'm not going to go into them, but I just wanted to... Um, I just <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep reminding me she loves quizzes. I know, I know that. But anyway, I just didn't want to fail to say that because I know my Paradeck lovers will be like, why didn't you mention that they have templates um, as well? And it's really easy to bring them in and you can create your own or you could use the templates as well. So anyways, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the truth. I was pretty blown away by quizzes. I was not familiar with how the lesson feature worked. So uh, I actually probably am going to play with that a little bit. <laughs> And you know, I'm going to be fair too. Um, um, you don't have to use Google Slides or PowerPoint to use Pear Deck. Um, a lot of the um, slides or the questions are already there without you having to use that. And I, I know she didn't mention it, but I'm going to have to mention it because it's so amazing. But there, um, and I skipping skipping my name right. Flashcard Factory inside of Pear Deck as a world language teacher, it's amazing. We don't have time to go over it, but it's just an incredible part. That, again, people might not be aware of Pear Deck that has that ability to do the Flashcard Factory, which is an incredible game where the kids are separated into teams and they get to collaborate and create these amazing uh, flashcards that you can take later on into GimKit. Did GimKit lose? Can we can we go back to that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget it, forget it. I'm not okay, gonna go back to that. <laughs> let it go. I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> yeah, I think you for bringing up the flashcard factory because I think what's the favorite thing of that the kids did with that is that they were actually working in teams, but they mm -hmm. didn't know actually showing their mastery as they were doing it. They're like, oh, we're just winning, we're playing in teams, but they're actually showing their knowledge. <laughs> so we're tricking them. 
to um, to learn. So I love it. Okay. Anyways, so we mentioned four of our favorite things that we probably could have spent weeks literally weeks going over so we apologize for not going over everything but we hope you got a little snapshot of the best part of favorite parts of them and so please feel free vote on your favorite apps um, between Microsoft Teams and Canvas and your favorite app between Pear Deck and Quizzes. We will not cry about it and next week we're going to vote for the final and see um, who wins over all so please don't forget to vote. Anything else right. Uh, no, I think that's it. I think, again, everybody gets to vote and then we are going to uh, continue the voting. There won't, there will not be any more shows on this, but I'm really excited that we do have a week off next week, right? I know. It is our spring break, everybody. I'm sorry. We are taking spring break to vote to get our final um, app winner, um, but we will see you the week after that. So don't miss and, us. Uh, uh, do we know what we're doing the week after that? I, I heard some rumors. Do you want to tell them? I wasn't ready, but go ahead. You can tell them what we're doing. Uh, we're still thinking about it, but I think we're going to take you into the AR and VR world. We're going to go into AR and VR for a whole month. I told him we should do a training every day, but he gave me that look. So we're probably not going to do that. But we're going to... So You're in say, for a treat. Yeah, we're so excited. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't wait. All right, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening, the rest of your day, and we will see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.